Hello ballers, and welcome to the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Tournament Paintball. My name is Steven, and in this video, we'll be discussing the basics of Tournament Paintball, as well as cover everything you need to know to have a great time at your first event. If you want to learn more about the finer details of Tournament Paintball, including high-level paintball strategies and tactics, be sure to tune into our live streams every Thursday at 8pm MST, and to join our Discord server linked in the description below. And finally, SVP Paintball merch is here. If you'd like to pick up your SVP Paintball dry fit t-shirt or long sleeve jersey, please click the the link in the description below. Let's get started. First, let's cover some of the basics of tournament paintball. Keep in mind that we'll be discussing these under the lens of the NXL or the National X-Ball League, which is the gold standard for event organizing and rule setting within the tournament paintball scene. We'll be going over these quickly, so feel free to pause the video or rewatch certain sections if needed. Tournament paintball within the NXL primarily consists of different speedball formats, with a few exceptions, like in the case of some classic or 10-man brackets. Speedball is a type of paintball played on the field that consists of inflated bunkers. Woods ball as you can imagine, is a type of paintball played on a field that consists of natural features, wooden or other material structures, dirt mounds, and or large black tubing referred to as hyperball. Within speedball, there are two primary formats, X-Man and X-Ball. X-Man is a format in which you have a limited amount of time to score a point. To score a point, you must press your opponent's buzzer that is at their start box. After a point is scored, the match is over and you move on to the next game. X-Man brackets vary by player count and division. The most common formats played are three-man, in which you have three minutes to score a point, 5 man in which you have 5 minutes to score a point, and 10 man in which you have 10 minutes to score a point. Rest in peace, 7 man. In all X-Man formats, you'll play a certain number of preliminary matches, usually 8, within a round robin format, after which top scoring teams will advance to a single elimination bracket where teams play head to head until one is crowned the champion. As soon as you enter the single elimination bracket, 3 and 5 man formats will play a best 2 out of 3, also referred to as a race to 2, to determine who advances, whereas 10 man will only play one one match to determine the victor. X-Man is an excellent way for new players to get a taste for what tournament paintball is like. X-Ball, on the other hand, is a five-player format in which you try to score as many points as possible in the time allotted. A match is usually 12 to 15 minutes long, depending on the division you play, and consists of multiple points with a two-minute break timer between each point. We'll talk more about divisions later. In this format, there is a mercy rule, wherein if you score a certain number of points above your opponent, the game will end immediately, regardless of how much time is left in the match. The team who scored the most points wins. The number of points needed to trigger a mercy rule depends on the division you play, but is anywhere between 3 and 6. You may have heard of the term split deck. This means two matches are played on the same field, alternating. In this case, when one point ends, the other will begin within one minute. The split deck format is an efficient way to run multiple games on the same field. When one match ends, either by running out of time or by mercy rule, the other will enter X-Ball, where they now only have two minutes between each point to get cleaned off, get air, get paint, receive the next play, and get back onto the field. If you're brand new to Tournament Paintball, I'd recommend playing a few 3-man tournaments to get a feel for what the sport is like, and shortly after moving on to 5-man. After a few tournaments, consider moving to X-Ball, as this is considered the big leagues of Tournament Paintball formats. Now that we've covered some of the various formats of Tournament Paintball, let's talk about some rules. We'll only cover those you need to get started in your first tournament. If you're wanting more information on the entire NXL rule set, be sure to click the link in the description below. First, it should go without saying that although Paintball is a contact sport, you you are absolutely not allowed to threaten or otherwise assault another player either on or off the field. Doing so will get you immediately ejected from the tournament and likely banned from future events. With that out of the way, let's talk about minor, major, and gross major penalties. Note that although the reasons for throwing these penalties are outlined in the NXL rulebook, a referee is given some discretion on which penalty they throw, similar to that of referees in other sports. A minor penalty is thrown when a player receives a hit on their person or equipment, usually in a non-obvious spot like on the pod pack or hot and continues to play on. It's possible to receive a minor penalty on an obvious hit so long as you don't materially influence the outcome of a game. Minor penalties eliminate the infractor and one other teammate, also known as a one-for-one. -one. A major penalty is thrown when a player receives a hit on their person or equipment, either obvious or otherwise, and materially influences the outcome of a point. This could include eliminating another player or giving your team some kind of advantage. Major penalties eliminate the infractor and two other teammates, also known as a two-for-one. A gross major penalty is thrown when a player is caught wiping or attempting to conceal a hit from a referee. There are other reasons gross majors are thrown, but we won't cover those in this video. There are many other instances in which you can receive a minor, major, or gross major penalty, but understanding these few examples will help you get started. Alright, with the rules out of the way, let's quickly talk about what you'll need to do before you step onto the field and play your first match. First, you'll need to create an account on pbleagues.com to receive your APPA number. This is ground zero for registering for almost all local, regional, and national tournaments. Second, 
Once you've received this number, either send it to the player or coach who owns the team you're playing for, or create your own team. If you're creating your own team, you'll need to collect the other player's APPA numbers to add them to your roster. Also note that there are some roster restrictions depending on which format and division you're trying to play. If you have any questions about roster restrictions, either type them in the comments below or join the Discord server and we'll be sure to help you out. Third, whether you've joined or created your own roster, the owner will need to register the team for the event you're playing in on pbleagues.com. Here, you'll determine which division you're playing and pay your entry fee to the tournament. If the tournament you're playing in is part of a series, you'll need to purchase an ID badge that will be good for the entire series. Now, let's talk about some paintball divisions. Paintball divisions range from Division 5 up to Pro, with Division 6 being an exception within a few areas. Nowadays, Division 5 is generally where all beginner players start. After your first year of playing, you graduate or are kicked out of Division 5 regardless of how many points you have. This is an attempt to protect the space where new players try and experience the sport of paintball. After that, it's a climb from Division 4, 3, 2, Semi-Pro, and Pro. In practice, paintball divisions aim to separate players based on skill and experience, the key phrase being in practice. In actuality, the system is designed to prevent players with a certain number of points from playing down divisions, or what is called sandbagging. But generally, this says nothing about how good they are within the pro division, if that makes sense. And this goes both ways. Without getting any further in the weeds, let me finish by saying that if you want to have a great time and learn all that you can, play in the lowest division possible. My only exception to this is with Division 4, because every person and their dog who has taken a long break from paintball always comes back to Division 4, making it one of the most wildly inconsistent competitive landscapes out there. If you've played Division 4 for a couple of years and are still struggling, consider moving up to Division 3 as the competition is generally more consistent and predictable. All right, so your team is registered, you've paid your entry fee, and now you're wondering, how much do I spend on paint? By and large, this depends on what division you're in and how deep into the tournament you go, and which format you're playing. You'll generally shoot more paint the higher up the divisions you go. In the case of the NXL, you'll have to buy paint in the form of vouchers that you can redeem at the event, which, at the time of filming this video, costs anywhere from 30 to 45 a case. A case of paint being 2,000 paintballs. The primary difference between a $30 and a $45 case of paint is the overall quality of the paintball, but we won't cover that in this video. In some instances, you'll be able to pre-purchase paint to ensure you have as much as you need, you should absolutely pre-purchase paint where possible. Just recently, a paint vendor announced days before a tournament that they sold out of paint, meaning that those who didn't pre-purchase had to find a different paint vendor, or worse, play with a very limited paint supply. Moving on. If you're playing in a three-man event, you may only need two to three cases of paint per player, which even then might sound like a lot. Just trust me, you'll need at least this much paint. If you're playing an X-Ball event, you may need four to six cases of paint per player on the low end and upwards of 10 to 13 on the high end, depending on how deep into the tournament you go. The general rule we use on my team is that we pool together $250 a person for paint for the entire event, and any leftover paint money we have goes towards the entry fee for the next event, but that's just what we do. Don't worry about wasting unused paint, as there are many buyback options at most events, especially the NXL. Any leftover vouchers can be returned to the paint vendor for a full refund. Now that we've sorted how much money you'll need for paint, let's talk about the day before and the day of the tournament. First, don't be that guy who gets to the venue at 10 p.m. the night before the tournament. I realize some of you have very busy lives and getting time off work can be difficult, but getting in that late affects not not only your sleep, but also the sleep of those who have to pick you up from the airport. Be courteous and respectful to those who paid a lot of money to be there. It's important to get to the venue the day before with plenty of time to walk the field with your team and make final adjustments you might need given how the gaps and angles have changed. The layout at your local field will almost always be slightly different than the layout at the event, given the terrain you're playing on, the differences in methodologies for setting up a field, so on and so forth. It's also the perfect time to check in at the registration booth, which must be done prior to to you stepping onto the field. After you've walked the field and checked in, it's tournament time. But what time should you show up to the field? Our team shows up to the field no later than an hour and a half before our first match, with a few exceptions. Like in the case that we're the very first game of the day and showing up that early isn't necessary. When you factor in the time it takes to find a parking spot, walk to the field, get in your gear, set up your gun, chrono your gun, grab paint, and start potting, an hour and a half is the right amount of time, especially if you run into any issues during this process. Finally, you're about to actually play some paintball. Let's 
let's talk about some things you need to know while playing a match. First and foremost, have fun. Having fun and playing paintball with your buddies is what it's all about. If not, why spend all this money just to have a bad time? Second, having a pit crew or a crew of people helping to clean off players, fill pods, and run out and get pods after each point will make the overall experience of playing a tournament much more enjoyable. Being able to focus on the match helps you make better decisions out on the field. If you aren't able to assemble a pit crew, generally, people at the tournament will be willing to pod run and help in the pits for a small fee. Third, in the case of X-Ball, whether you got shot or you scored a point, get off the field as quickly as possible so you can be ready for the next point. Being prepared and knowing what you're doing when you go out for the next point will drastically lower your stress levels. Fourth, be kind to the refs, even if they make a bad call. They really are doing a thankless job. Showing some appreciation will go a long way in making the matches you play feel fair, especially if you're on the same field with the same refs for most of the tournament. And fifth, regardless of winning or losing, leave everything on the field and go shake your opponent's hands. Here's a pro tip. If you want to get good really quickly, be sure to ask for advice from the team you lose to. They will almost always be happy to share the secret sauce as to why you lost that match. As soon as you shake your opponent's hand, be sure to get out of the pits as quickly as possible to give space for the next team coming in. After you get your stuff out, find a quiet place to chat with your team about the game, what went wrong, what went right, key moments that shifted the momentum, etc. Doing so will help keep the team unified in wins and losses. Also, be mindful of how much time you have until your next match. In some cases, we stay close to the field because our match is in an hour or less. Other times, especially if we have a long gap, we'll go back to a booth or staging area to dress down and cool off. Managing your energy is crucial at this point. Make sure to stay hydrated and snack throughout the tournament. All right, so day one of the tournament is over. Congratulations. At the NXL and in the case of X-Ball, you'll play two preliminary matches on the first day and two preliminary matches the second, with the tournament bracket starting the following Sunday. Whatever you and your team decide to do immediately after leaving the venue, be sure to plan a team meeting, preferably over dinner, to discuss the day and prepare for the next. You want to stay synced with your teammates as much as possible. I promise this will translate onto the field. After you have a team meeting, go to bed. I know it can be exciting to hang out and stay up with your buddies, but it's incredibly important that you get as much sleep as possible to allow your body to recover. Nothing trashes your mental faster than waking up early, feeling like hot garbage, and knowing you have to play two more grueling matches. On a side note, I actually think this is where most lower division teams lose, in the early morning of the second day. Depending on how much sleep you got and how well your body feels will absolutely determine how mentally prepared you are to go to war. And that's it. Everything else is a rinse and repeat. I really appreciate you guys making it this far into the video. It really does mean a lot. If you did, be sure to comment big brain down below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss when we drop our next video. Also, don't forget to check out our Discord server in the description below where you can discuss paintball or play video games with like-minded individuals. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video, but until then, stay safe and have a good one.